Hello, welcome, I'm Peggy, and our kitchen is open with good food and good recipes. And we have a folder here called Comfort Food. And uh, I am very pleased to have Marie Hagler here. And Marie is from Clemson University. She is a food safety and nutrition expert. Right? Yes, correct, correct. Okay, we're so glad to have you. It's good to be here. And you've had things, isn't it true that if you use the foods that are in season, you save money? Yes, and you also get more nutritious nutrition out of that as well. All right. Because thing, or more flavor, I guess I should say. Because those foods that are in season are going to be tastier. Um, they'll probably be more affordable, and they're packed with nutrients. All right. Like butternut squash. What more which, could you want? I know exactly. Now this is a recipe for like a casserole. Yes. So it's a roasted butternut squash bacon and pasta bake. So. Um, what we're going to start off with is butternut squash, which is in season now. All the winter squashes, there's all kinds available. But we're going to deal with mainly the butternut squash, which um, you can get in lots of different sizes. And for this recipe, we're going to use three cups of diced or cubed butternut squash. And I started um, cubing them up over here. But I'm just going to show you, because sometimes when you get things like this, uh, they can be a little intimidating to handle. So I cut this one in half, and half of it is already in there. And then you can see, like, um, most squashes are so seeds. So one half makes quite a nice yes. bowl. Yes, and actually I could probably get away with just yeah. doing that. But I'm going to show you, in case you're a little bit, it's hard to, sometimes I like to just cut it in half when I have a whole one just because it's hard to cut it lengthwise. So I'm going to cut it. It can be kind of tough. All right. And then you would, if you use this half, you would want to spoon out the seeds. You want to scoop seeds. out the seeds. And just like a pumpkin kind of. Well, it's in the pumpkin family, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. And because of this orange color, um, you're going to get a lot of antioxidants, beta carotene for your eyes. Um, but I'm not, I'm going to, so you would spoon out, get all the stringy parts right. out. Um, you would also want to peel it, and that can be a little bit difficult too. So you can use a, I got a serrated peeler that oh, yeah, makes it wonderful. easier to. Well, I, I spoke too soon. <laughs> I know. I'm going to slice it. So you'd want to just peel it. You could also do this with your knife. Sometimes I just carve around it with my knife. And then you peel that off, cube it up, okay. and voila. So, so you put it in kind of bite-sized pieces yes. in that bowl. So these are the, the butternut squash, just a little piece. It kind of looks like cantaloupe to me. Yeah, it does look yeah. like cantaloupe. Yeah. So, and then the other thing we're going to do, is so we have butternut squash, is we're going to chop up um, an onion, a whole onion. So I have a sweet onion, sweet Vidalia onion, but you can use whatever kind of onion floats your boat. Um, and I'm going to use a whole one. So I'm going to take off, and I'm going to make the slices rather thick because they're, they're going to it's going to roast with the butternut squash. So. So that's the way you want to you want to be sure it's peeled. Peeled, and then I'm going to cut it that way, and then just make big chunks, big wedges like that. I'm going to go ahead and put it, I'm going to put out everything on this pan. All right, now have you put any oil on the pan? I have not, but it's because I'm going to add oil and mix it oh, all together. okay. So, so that's just a, a, like a cookie sheet. Yes. And you've covered it with foil. I covered it with foil just because it makes the cleanup process easier. I um, agree. But you could just as well not cover it with foil. And in, in, in this case, we're going to roast it at a kind of high temperature, so it might stick a little bit. So that's another reason to put down the foil, just so... If it sticks, you'll have an easier cleanup. Just some big dice, or not dices, but big slivers of onion. And then, I'm going to add some rosemary, which is a great winter herb to use. Now, I said this will serve about six servings. Yes, and you once you see it, it's, it's going to be in that dish. All right. So you can give or take, depends on how much you like to eat, but it should be good for six servings. Um, this is rosemary, and it smells like Christmas to me for some reason. But we're going to just um, chop this up and add it to the And it's always nice squash. to use the fresh, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So I'm using about, so I used a whole onion, about um, a half of a large butternut squash, um, one small butternut squash, which would equal three cups of that um, cube butternut squash, and then about two teaspoons of fresh rosemary that's been chopped. You 
can smell it. Oh, it's lovely. Yeah, I guess it does smell like Christmas. I don't know I never why. Thought about <laughs> it. Just to me, I don't know why. But and you want to chop it? It's kind of fine. It is kind of yeah. fine. Yeah, that's good. All right, I'm just going to sprinkle that over top. You want to set your oven at 425 to roast this. And it's going to roast for about um, 45 minutes. And every 10 minutes or so, I'll give it a stir just to make sure everything's mixed well. Um, I also have two cloves of garlic that I already minced that I'm going to add to. That if, you do, if you don't particularly care for garlic, you could do without it. And then a little salt. little pepper, and then the oil, which... And this is olive a, oil? This is extra virgin olive oil. Okay. And you do about a tablespoon You, you just and a half. drizzle it on top, in other words. Mm-hmm. And then this is where... And you didn't even measure that. I didn't, but it's about a tablespoon and a half. Okay. okay. Or just to your taste. So this is, you mix it together. You could use a spoon, but I like to... Somewhere we have... Hands dirty. Towel paper. Wait a minute. Do oh, I have, a, I have a wet rag. I can oh, use. you do? Okay. Yeah. So, you will mix that up together like that, and then pop it into the oven, 425, 45 minutes, or until the butternut squash gets tender, and the onions are nice and brown, which looks like so. I'll show you. So it doesn't, it, it's a very simple recipe, and if you had a big crowd, you could very easily double it. Oh, yeah. There it is. You can make several. See, Marie is magic. That's it. Yeah. So That's... that is your roasted butternut squash. You can see it's, um, the onions are brown. It's kind of brown. It smells delicious. So and that's you... one part of this bake or pot or casserole that we're going to make. All right. Um, okay. Over here, I have pretty much a whole package of bacon that I fried up earlier. And it's just um, crumbled. Yeah, it's just yeah. crumbled. I'm going to go ahead and put it in this pan because I'm going to mix it together All before right. I stick it in there. So this is, I think, about a pound of bacon. Um, more or less, if you are vegetarian, you can eliminate the bacon from the dish. I kind of added a generous help in the bacon. And then we also have pasta that's going to be the base of the casserole. Right, now you have already, of course, cooked I've the already pasta. cooked pasta. I use this corkscrew like pasta. Yeah. There's a different name for it, but I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, but you can use penne, you could use bow tie. Any, anything that elbow. you like. Yes, and that is um, eight ounces or half a pound that's been cooked. All right, and drained, and obviously. Drained. So all these things, you can do all these things kind of ahead of time, and then when you want to bake it, you can put them all together. But the thing that we're going to mix with this pasta is going to be a cheese sauce. Okay. So, and I should also mention that this butternut squash by itself after you roast it, it just yeah. could be a great side dish. I mean, we're going to add different stuff. But and you're then, making this into a casserole. This, to a casserole. But on its own, it would be good. Um, also, what I'm about to do with the cheese sauce and the um, pasta would be good as, on its own because it's almost like a okay. macaroni and cheese. All right. So this little folder has a, a lot of bonuses. <laughs> yes. So well, what, um, is in that, what is that flour? This is uh, two tablespoons of flour. I'm going to turn the eye on in a minute after I put that in. And then I'm going to use a little bit of salt like a half a teaspoon of salt, maybe a little less than that. Then I'm gonna mix that together. I'm gonna add a little milk before I turn it on just so it doesn't start burning. Now, which one is which? This one. So I'm gonna put that on medium. And what we're gonna try to do is just make a thick milk sort of sauce. So I'm gonna whisk this together. You want that to mix, and then you add the rest of the milk? Then I'm going to gradually add the milk. If you would, like, pour, help me pour this right. in there, that would be fantastic. Okay. Is it so heating gonna, up? It is yes. going to be heated, okay. so I'm going to turn it this way so I don't... You want me to put a little bit in there now? Put a little bit in there. Yes, ma'am. Excellent. Um, and then we're going to add some cheese How much to milk it. did you... That was a cup and a half of All milk. Right. I used 2%, but you could use skim. You could use whole if you wanted to. Well, 2% sounds about right yes. or something like <laughs> yeah, exactly. this. Exactly. And then for the cheese, I've got a couple different kinds of cheeses I'm going to put in there. I've got some Parmesan cheese. I'm going to use about a third of a cup of Parmesan. And then I also have some smoked Gouda. Not the rest? 
Yeah, go ahead. Put it in. There we go. We'll let that kind of heat up. So, um, do you like smoked Gouda? Have you ever had yes. smoked Gouda cheese? It has a sort of bacon smell to it, so I thought that would go nicely with the bacon and butternut squash. But this is what it looks like when you get in the store. I cut it in half, and then I shredded it up, or grated it up, and this is probably about a half a cup. Is this so, getting hot? Yeah, it's getting yeah. hot. Make sure I don't scorch it. So I'm gonna wait for just a minute. So now you have two kinds, Two or three kinds of cheese. <laughs> I have two kinds, but this, I was just showing this as an example oh, so of what that you, looked like. Oh, so you put little cut pieces off of that and yeah, put it in there. Yeah, I grated that. Yeah. So that was a half a cup of Gouda. And then we're going to use um, half of the Parmesan cheese is going to top the casserole, and then half is going to go into the cheese sauce. So, so now this would go over Yes, the that pasta. will toss with the pasta. And then you put it all in there together? Yeah. Well... I must say it's different. It is different. It's yeah. good. I had a lady call me. Sometimes people call me and ask me for recipes, and she said, I need some butternut squash recipes. I happened upon a recipe that was similar to this. I tried it. It was delicious. So then I thought, I'm going to bring it to Peggy Danny This to is, see if she likes it. And this will be This is a wonderful wintertime recipe, and certainly you can use it in the holidays if you want to. Yeah. And it definitely has all those um, holiday, winter, fall flavors. Is this getting so, hot? Not really. So, I think it's hot. Um, so I'm going to start adding this cheese. All right. You add and I'll stir. So I'm going to use about a third of a cup. Again, I'm going to use the rest of it to top it, so I'm going to not use all of it. I'm making a little bit of a mess. Then we're going to add all this gouda. Now, that's all there is to it. That's, That's all, all you put in there. And we're just going to let that melt, thicken okay. and Okay. Now you stir that and let me show people. This is the folder. And uh, thanks to Clemson and also to Marie Hagler. And it's called Comfort Food. And the number of it is 852. 852. And if you would like this, it is free. We'd appreciate very much that self-addressed stamped envelope. And be sure you put the number of the recipe on the envelope because we get lots of mail. And sometimes we open it up. We don't know what, what it was you wanted. And we do have lots of recipes. So this is 852. And send it to the Peggy Denny Show, Post Office Box 1616, Greenville, South Carolina, 29602. And we will have it on its way to you. Or you can click on PeggyDenny.com, and we will post these for you. And uh, there are several recipes on this folder, so uh, including the cranberry, which you're going to do next. So we're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back. <laughs> 